Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Minecraft Modding with Fabric series. In this episode, I will introduce you to the series, so I'll explain what Fabric is, what modding is in Minecraft, what you can expect, and what you need to know. So we'll talk about what is modding, what you need to know, what you will learn, what is Fabric, and the development hierarchy. Okay? Let's get started here. So first of all, Minecraft mods. Hopefully you've played around with Minecraft mods if you're looking at this series right now, but if you don't know what Minecraft modding is, it's a way to change the game. So if you love Minecraft by itself, it's a pretty awesome game, but mods make it even better because you can actually add new stuff to the game or even change the game itself. So you can add stuff like giraffes or dinosaurs to the game, all kinds of new weapons, uh, new worlds, new experiences, like just anything you can imagine can be added to the game with mods, right? So it can range from simple textures and cosmetic changes to entire new game modes and mechanics. And mods are actually created using Java, so if you know Java, that's great. You can create mods with Java for Minecraft, along with tools such as Forge or Fabric, which we'll talk about in the future. And the cool thing about mods is they can be shared with anyone, so after you're done coding your mod, you can share it with your friends or create a mod pack, and people can play on a server together and enjoy the mod together if they want to. So mods are a great way to make the game more interesting. Something that you have to understand though is that plugins are not mods. You may be familiar with my plugin development series, so this is a series that I have that has over 600,000 views at the moment of recording this video. And some people think plugins are the same as mods and they're sometimes used interchangeably, but they are different. So plugins you can think of as add-ons that run specifically on the Minecraft server and are used to add new functionality to MC servers. So this includes commands and basic mechanics that you can add to the game. Mods, however, directly modify or add to the game code. Plugins do not actually change the code of Minecraft itself, it can only add to it. So with that, you can add entirely new things to the game, such as new mobs, new blocks, new items, new worlds, stuff that plugins simply cannot do, really. Another big difference is that plugins run on the server, while mods run on the client and the server. So the game that you have on your computer, the Minecraft that you run, is called the client, and the server is what you use to play with friends, or your world, rather. So plugins are only run on the server, so they can only add things to the server gameplay, while mods run on both the client and the server, meaning that you can add special effects and cool things to your Minecraft game itself, as well as the server. And we'll see how that you know plays together more in the future, but for now you just have to know that that's one of the key differences between plugins and mods. So plugins can add simple stuff like commands and different mechanics, while mods can do way more, like add custom items, commands, blocks, entities, and stuff like that to the game. They're way more powerful. The trade-off though is that mods are harder to learn how to create and also they're harder to work with. But don't worry, in this series I'll teach you all about what you need to know. Okay, so what do you need to know, right? So first of all, you need to have Minecraft, you need to know the game of Minecraft, you need to love the game of Minecraft for you to be able to make mods for Minecraft, obviously, right? And then you need to know Java. Java is a very, very, very popular programming language that if you're watching this, you need to know because uh, all the mods that you're going to be creating is with Java. Minecraft is made in Java, like I said before, so you have to know Java to be able to modify or add to the Minecraft code itself, okay? That's very important. So in terms of how much Java you need to know, it really depends, but generally speaking, you need to know all the basics along with object-oriented programming. So you need to know how to create variables, how to work with those variables, how to do control flow with if statements and switch statements, how to do looping, uh, so like for loops, while loops, do while loops, all that stuff. And then with object-oriented programming, you need to know how to create classes, how to instantiate those classes with objects, how to use interfaces, and all that fun stuff, okay? You need to have a good grasp on how all that works before you even attempt this series because, because modding relies heavily on Java experience. It's all coded in Java, right? If you don't know Java, however, I do have a Java series in case you are interested. People say it's really good and it's helped them throughout their learning. There's also great resources out there from other people as well, so make sure you check it out if you have not already. So that's what you need to know. Let's talk about where you're actually going to be learning in the series. So you're going to be learning a bunch of things, and this is only a few of the things that you'll be learning, but you'll be learning how to create custom items, custom blocks, data generation, so create custom recipes and stuff like that, custom sounds, world generation, commands, events, entities, mix-ins, and way more. A lot of those things you might not even know what they are, but you're going to be learning about all of that. Every single thing that is listed on the screen and more you'll be learning about in detail. I like to be very detailed when I make my videos. If you watched my videos before, you already know that, but if you're new to this, welcome. All right, so what is Fabric? So in this series to create mods, we're going to be using something called Fabric, which is a set of tools that let you create mods in Minecraft. So it includes the Fabric Loader, Fabric Loom, language modules to let you use like Kotlin and stuff like that, the Fabric API, and the Fabric Installer. 
So those are all just a bunch of different tools that bundle together into something called Fabric that let you create mods and then use mods on your computer with Minecraft. So these tools provide developers with a wide range of options for creating mods and making it easier for developers to create mods with flexibility and control, okay? Now, I chose Fabric for this series just because it's newer, it's more lightweight, and it supports the latest versions of Minecraft. You may have heard of another tool called Forge. Forge is pretty much the OG of Minecraft modding. It's what a lot of people still use to do modding in Minecraft. Forge is definitely more established, compatible with a wide range of Minecraft versions, and provides a wide range of tools and resources. Fabric on the other end, like I said, is more recent with a focus on faster development and is compatible with the latest version of Minecraft and is generally more lightweight. But of course, at the end of the day, everything has its pluses and minuses, so both platforms have their own strengths and weaknesses. Fabric, in my opinion, is easier to learn. You can pretty much do everything you would want to do in Forge anyway, so that's why I chose it for this series, in case you're wondering. So, yep. So this slide is probably the most technical. It's what I call the hierarchy of development. It probably doesn't even make sense, but that's what I like to call it and think of it as. So it's actually the order in which you create your mods. So there's a bunch of different tools out there that let you create mods within Minecraft, right? Such as Fabric. But whenever you're creating these Fabric mods, you're not actually only going to use Fabric. You're going to be using different things like the Minecraft API itself, the Fabric API, third-party APIs, and mix-ins, okay? Now there's a recommended way to actually do all these things because you want to rely on other people's code before you start making your own code. And it's just, it's just a way for you to not mess up and make things harder for yourself, okay? For example, the number one place you want to start when adding a feature to your mod is using the native Minecraft API itself. So when we start creating our Fabric mods, we're actually going to be using and interfacing with the Minecraft code, the server code and the client code and all that stuff. So since that's actually the code of Minecraft itself, it makes sense to use that over something else like third-party stuff like Fabric, third-party APIs of Fabric, and then mix-ins. So this should be the foundation of your mod and any mod specific functionality should be built on top of it as much as you can. Now, when you start to run out of capability with the native Minecraft API and others, you just move down the list. So if there's something that you can do within the native Minecraft API, but you know is part of Fabric, then use the Fabric API, okay? And the thing about the Fabric API though is that it's very lightweight. They add only what you need and not every single thing out there, right? It's not as beefy as something else, maybe like Ford or something else, right? So in that case, you want to use a third-party API, which is built upon Fabric in the, net mi in the native Minecraft API, but they provide that extra functionality that you may want to bring in whenever you need it, right? So Fabric API isn't always going to have everything, so you can rely on third-party APIs as the, the third tier, right? Now let's say there's a feature that, you know, it's not part of the Minecraft API, definitely not part of Fabric API, and no one has created a third-party API to be able to do something that you want to do, right? In that case, use mixins which essentially is a way to allow developers to modify the behavior of existing game classes without having to create a new class or override methods. And this is definitely the least recommended uh, thing that you should be doing because uh, things change over time and you would have to change your code. It's easier to rely on other people's code, generally speaking. So you should definitely do this as a final step. That's why it's listed one, two, three, four, okay? So I would say the first one is the most obvious. Obviously use something that's already built into Minecraft before relying on something else. So that's what the slide is all about, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so now I wanna tell you just how this series is gonna work. So whenever you watch any of the videos in the series, even this one, right? Always check the description. I will, leave, I will always leave links to important resources like documentation, so wiki links to maybe the Fabric MC website itself, stuff like that. I'll also have written tutorials sometimes. Sometimes I'll make a blog post myself or I'll leave a link to someone else's, right? And I'll always have links to other stuff out there, okay? So just make sure to always check the description for a bunch of inf important information that goes along with the video itself, okay? And you'll also usually find timestamps in the description below so you can skip around in the video if you ever want to. So let's say you watch the whole video and then later you come back, you know exactly where you can skip to to get the information you need. The second part of this is that I always will provide the code, a GitHub link to the code for this episode, okay? For any episode that I create in the series. So make sure you check the description for that as well. So in case you want to come back to something or you want to have the code firsthand for what I'm working on, then you can look in the description, click the link and see the code and you can copy it, paste it, download it, change it, whatever you want to do with the code, okay? So make sure you check that for that as well, okay? All right, so this is the last slide. These are the resources for this series. So the first one is obviously my channel, so make sure you subscribe to get uh, my future videos and stuff like that. The second thing is the GitHub link to where all the code will be for this series. So. All the code for the series will be under the MC Modding Fabric uh, organization. 
which is a, basically a way of grouping your GitHub repositories. The third thing is the link to our Discord community. So make sure you join that. It's very important that you join this community. If you ever need help with anything, you can join, ask for help with your code if you're stuck on something, uh, get some advice, or just get some friends, okay? So make sure you join that. Very, very important. And the last thing is also very important. It's the fabricmc.net website. This is where you can find the official documentation for how to use Fabric. It's very helpful. Uh, they have a great uh, set of documentation for how to use Fabric and all that fun stuff, okay? So make sure you check it out. Uh, make sure you bookmark it and use all these resources because they are there to help you, okay? And that's it. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you find this series very helpful. Um, make sure you like the video if you like it. And thanks for watching, everybody. Peace.